All right, so let's get right into these axles. Bag number five. Pay attention because the diff can actually go in either way. If you put it in the wrong way, your wheels are going to turn opposite each other, front and rear. So we want this on this side, also on the left side. Now the housing cover looks symmetrical, but there's a dot on one side. The dot all, as far as the drawings go, the dot goes on the right. Here we go. Boy, that is a nice tight fit. There we go. So they want you to line the two caster blocks. There's a mark here and there's a mark there. So that goes like that. But first we have to put a bearing in. All right. So notice the two lines are marked here. Same thing on this side. There we go. Make sure they're pushed in all the way. They want these. This way here. And they warn you not to over tighten them. So we'll put these in by hand. If you're careful putting it in, you'll be able to get it in with a bit of a snap. Get that back in there. All right. So you need the shoulder screws. These are also screws that you really should be careful not to over tighten. Now, there's a little bit of plastic that came out from the screw. I'm just going to trim it out. Again, some of the plastic came out with the screw. It has a screw of make, making the screw basically makes its own threads as you're putting it in, so it's pushing out a little bit of plastic. There we go. Now 
Open things are very nice and smooth. Like in the picture, they're showing you to install the lower link mount, uh, but the other one is already installed. Uh, but they warn you here to do both sides. So these go downwards like this. Put the steering arms on. I'm going to start these by hand. Now these hexes are six millimeters. Uh, the shaft here looks pretty long. There might be room for uh, slightly thicker ones if you wanted to change your offset a little bit. It probably also depends on what wheels you're using. Now you don't need to tighten this a lot. If you tighten it too much, you're going to make a groove on the shaft. And if ever you need to change bearings, it's going to be a pain in the butt. So the wheel hexes, I guess we can just put them on like that for now. Don't want to lose them. So that's about it for the front. Now let's go to the back. For that, we need bag number six. So I'll throw a bearing in here, put a bearing in there. Before I put the grease onto the gear first, and I'm going to put it on after because you know it's kind of messy and it's actually accessible, so we can do it afterwards. All right, some gear, some grease on there. Let's get these on here. Now, while the front shaft was assembled uh, this way, well, for me, for you, it will have been assembled this way. Uh, the rear shaft is assembled the other way. So in my case, the shaft will be facing me. In your case, it will be assembled this way. So let's put this back this way. It's important to keep the proper orientation when you're building it because this spool needs to go in a certain direction. Otherwise, like I said before, you're going to have a front going one way and the rear going the other way. can see there's grease on everything even though I only put it on the little one so again uh, if you look at the cover you got the dot that's going to be on the right of the axle uh, if you're building it towards you it'll be on your left but as far as the drawing goes it goes this way How does that 
Sí. something you don't see very often is the axles are held in with screws are done so all in all uh, the axles were pretty painless very easy to build uh, very easy to understand the instructions for that part so next up the links and probably installing them on the chassis uh, which means installing the axles as well so I guess we'll meet on the next page see ya